Champions keep playing until they get it right. Billie Jean King. Everything down for the day on Friday. We'll jump into all these charts. Have a lot of interesting things going on. Just remember, my friends, as Billie Jean King says, you keep playing until you get it right. If you're a champion, it doesn't take anything more as far as our effort goes than committing yourself to the practice. That's what you've got to do. 10 to 15 minutes each and every day. Doesn't matter how long it takes. Once you master it, you will more than make up for the time it took you to understand it. And you'll only understand it with OJT on the job training. Let's jump into these charts. S&P 500 down 1.64% for the day. We can see on the half day chart, we are still below the 200 EMA. Things are in the green. We've seen things slide sideways, bumped up in the afternoon on Thursday and then down on Friday. Not enough energy yet to push through that 200 EMA. What is going to happen as things tighten up? It's going to break out one way or the other, up or down. We look at the two-day chart. We can see that we have now three up candles. They've not gotten enough energy to push through. Is, are we going to see a breakdown here? I don't know. The STC has gone green over the last three candles. Well, actually the last two candles last week and this week. And again, we see that inherent weakness in there as far as candle price action goes. What's going on with the weekly? Well, of course, we do have a first green candle we've seen in many, many weeks since we saw the, this crash occur, and we're waiting to sort of see how that takes off. Did manage to penetrate the 200 EMA on the weekly, so we'll see just what happens and how things shake out. I'm, of course, waiting for a nice red down candle to, I'm sorry, well, down candles, yes, and a down STC particularly like the successful ones we saw back here in early May. And then when we had that crossover back in late April, we had some real opportunities to jump into some successful down moves. So keep that in mind as we move along with the S&P 500. Now, what are we up to as we switch over back to 195-minute chart and we look at... NASDAQ 100. We saw where things really popped up nicely in the afternoon on Thursday and then rolled back over. Now you want to see where the 200 EMA is. Not, not nearly as close as the STC, as the S&P 500 is. Uh, the STC still green on the half day two day. Green, again, two candles into that. And you can see where also that energy is slowing down in the up movement. Still well below the 200 EMA on the two-day chart. And on the weekly, let's tune that in for you too. Looks more like a bounce off that 200 EMA. And we'll see just where things are going. Bit of a flux. Remember summertime trading zone? Very difficult to find good patterns and long movements because so much of the volume goes out of the market in the summertime. We keep using that adage, and I'll keep reminding you of it until you learn it. The sell in May and go away live to trade another day. So don't get frustrated if you're having some trouble in the summertime trading zone. Just remember, it just means that the fall-winter trading zone, which is the fat, happy time of year, is on the way. That's when we have more consistent moves, either up or down, and just a lot more beautiful and easy for you to see. Let's move to 20-year bonds out of stocks. What do we see going on there? Well, we had, it was, I, I just had to jump in when things rotated over. I jumped into this down move on uh, TBF and set that up. And so far, so good. Haven't gotten uh, popped out of it yet, either to the upside or the downside, but things have been moving slowly and exorably in the right direction. I hope they continue to go that way. This is the TBF. This is the pro share short of the 20 minute, uh, 20 year rather, treasury bonds. So it's the short of TLT. When TLT goes down, TBF goes up. Now, the fees are higher. It's rebalanced every day or recharted every day, which means if you're up, if you're up 
2% one day and then you're down 2% the next day, the problem you have there is you didn't just give up what you had, the 2% comes off the new figure, which can compound your losses. You learn that by practice trading it. So I would encourage you to practice trade it if you want to be able to short things like bonds, like the S&P 500, like the NASDAQ 100, those things are available. Now, we see things again just trundling down nicely. STC red, we look at the two day. Where are we there? Again, we are well below the 200 EMA on the two day chart. We do have a green up STC. We had you know, six days of up movement. These last ones are moving down. I'm hoping that's going to pull that over going down. What do we have working for us? Of course, the weekly is down in a red down candle. STC is red there. So we're basically at 11 on our success multiplier formula. I love 15s. That means everything's down, but it's okay. As long as you keep in mind what's going on, you watch your trade and you're smart about setting either a trailing stop if that's something you're into or at least know where it is by doing what? Of course, that would be putting in your profit and loss bands, which we always do in our trades. Two to one risk to reward ratio. We set the stop at the, at what? We set it always at our average true range. That is our bottom. Now, there's wonderful little tools over here. The short position, which I used here, versus the long position when you go long. I set those in, set my profit and loss bands, and then I hope for victory. That is what I'm looking for. And in fact, there we are with TBF. PSQ is the short of the NASDAQ 100. And of course, that one did not work for us. We pulled that early, hoping that we would have a victory. We did not jump out of that with a little bit of a loss, but you know, that's okay. That's what happens when you actually really trade and you really practice, whether it's fractionally or paper trading, or once you master the charts and you make up your own mind with your own money. Remember, we're not a stock calling service. We're an education firm. We want you to get educated with us. So that's where we are on bonds. Let's go to gold. Gold down for the day, 1.02%. Gold just didn't have the energy to break through. And as we see things rolling over, heading down on Friday, nice news is the STC is still positive. It's not rotated over yet. We look at the two-day chart. I'm afraid it is still red on the STC, but we've seen some days of up movement, sideways sliding and trying to move up again, but a long wick on the top where that green candle just could not last above, bouncing up, down, and back up through the 200 EMA on that two-day chart. Check out the weekly. It is still negative also with a doji this week after an attempt to move up last week after all those weeks of down movement. So we just don't have gold with enough energy to trudge along. So Keep an eye on things as we jump into the next week. If you do have the STC rotate over going down, you have those larger charts potentially moving with you. That is where we are on gold. Lastly, we will go to Bitcoin. What's up with Bitcoin? Well, you can look at the half day chart and you can see that Bitcoin's been in a very tight range. We see that from the average true range. We saw where things popped up on the 31st and then sort of inexorably rolled back over down 2.74% for the day. Not so good on Bitcoin. And again, our STC is not doing much for us on this short chart. Why? We've talked about this plenty of times before because of all the sideways sliding action. Your indicators many times just don't do too much for you. What do we see going on on Bitcoin on the two-day chart? We saw that two-day bump up and then things going back to normal. The good news is we're not hitting those lower lows at this point. So we'll watch. Maybe we found a bottom and Bitcoin's just waiting. This is the weekly chart to start moving up. We ended the week with a doji. Maybe that's good news. That indecision means the market's trying to figure out whether or not it's going to pump up. Hasn't done it yet, but that'd be nice to see, wouldn't it? That's where we are, folks. Thank you so much for being with us. 
particularly appreciate all of our Patreon supporters. God bless you all. Oh, and don't forget, we will be having this next Wednesday, the 8th. That is when we're going to be putting out our live question answer call in session for all of our Patreon supporters. Can't wait to have you there with us. If you're not a Patreon supporter, consider jumping in at any of the three levels. We will have you participating, asking the questions that you have. We'll help you backtrack the stocks and ETFs you're interested in. Always love participation. And if you can't participate, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll try to answer your questions if you email them to me. And we try to always make a video and send that out the same day we record it. So if you can't be there live, you can be there on the recording, having your questions answered. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.